if you're looking for a way to have a conversation with folks about workplace issues, about union issues, here's your opening. Tomorrow, April 28th, is Workers' Memorial Day. It's a day that the labor movement has set aside to uh, memorialize workers who have died on the job. And every year in honor of this memorial, the AFL-CIO puts out a death on the job report. Of um, it, it, It's just a, a report cataloging uh, you know, deaths and injuries on the job in the United States, some statistics, uh, some uh statistics on enforcement and funding of enforcement mechanisms, things like that. Uh, so, Adam, what were some of the highlights from the AFL-CIO's report this year, or lowlights, as it were? Yeah, sure, sure. So I'll start with a little bit about the report and then talk a little bit more about Workers' Memorial Day. Uh, so this is the 33rd annual report, Death on the Job, the Toll of Neglect. This annual report serves as a national and state-by-state -state profile of worker safety and health, offering direction to policymakers and regulatory bodies as they strive to address the scourge of working people facing death, injury, and illness at work. Among the report's startling data are the disproportionate rates of Latino and black workers at risk of dying on the job, Black workers are facing the highest job fatality rates in nearly 15 years, and Latino workers continue to face the greatest risk of dying on the job compared to all other workers. The report also sheds light on the enormous cost of job injuries and illness on our society, an estimated $174 billion to $348 billion a year and the flat-funded budget for job safety agencies to fulfill their growing duties, which do not even keep up with inflation. It also outlines key strategies to address this crisis, including a renewed commitment to regulatory oversight agencies, improved data and transparency, stronger deterrence against employer retaliation, and prioritizing standard setting and enforcement. Despite workers' hard-won safety and health rights, this report shows the fight is far from over, said AFL-CIO President Liz Schuler. Too many workers face retaliation for reporting unsafe working conditions or injuries, while low penalties fail to deter employers from following the law. The alarming disparities in workplace fatalities among workers of color are unacceptable, symptomatic of a deep, deeply ingrained racial inequity and the need to pay increased attention to the dangerous industries that treat workers as disposable. As we honor those who have fallen this Workers' Memorial Day, we remain committed to holding corporations accountable so that all jobs are safe jobs where every worker can return home safely at the end of the day. Again, that was Liz Schuler, president of AFL-CIO. AFL-CIO Secretary-Treasurer Fred Redmond said this report exposes an urgent crisis for workers of color and reaffirms what we've long known. When we talk about justice for workers, we must prioritize racial equity. The fact that black and Latino workers continue to die on the job at disproportionate rates demands a reckoning with the failure of employers to protect them. We must honor the lives lost on the job with action as we recommit ourselves to advancing safety, health, and equity for all workers. And just some uh, highlights or lowlights, rather, from this year's report uh, covering 2022, 344 workers died each day from hazardous working conditions. 5,486 workers were killed on the job in the United States. An estimated 120,000 workers died from occupational diseases. The job fatality rate increased again to 3.7 per 100,000 workers. Workers of color die on the job at a higher rate. As mentioned, black and Latino worker job fatality rates are disproportionate compared with all other workers and are continuing to increase. Black workers' job fatality rate was the highest it has been in nearly 15 years, 4.2 per, per 100,000 workers. Latino workers' job fatality rate increased again to 4.6 per 100,000 workers, meaning they continue to face the greatest risk of dying on the job than all workers, at 24% higher than the national average. The rate marked a 24% increase over the past decade. Employers reported nearly 3.5 million work-related injuries and illnesses, an increase from the previous year. And notice I said employers reported. So 
certainly an, an undercount. These sobering findings stress the urgent need for immediate action to prioritize worker safety and shed light on the escalating challenges facing workplace protections. Progress has been hindered by growing opposition from big corporations to workers' rights and protections. Extremist politicians have also unnecessarily politicized critical issues such as climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic, which has created more challenges to longstanding problems of heat and infectious disease exposure in the workplace, and the lack of funding has left our agencies scrambling to keep up. So, I'll stop there to just recommend that folks check out the report. I think we will probably do a deeper dive on the report in coming episodes. Um, as Jacob mentioned, Sunday, April 28th is Workers Memorial Day. Uh, the administrators of OSHA and MSHA will be joining the AFL-CIO president in a national ceremony. Um, when Workers Memorial Day was started back in 1970, an estimated 38 U.S. workers suffered fatal on-the-job injuries each day. Uh, today, work-related work injuries in the U.S. claim about 15 people's lives a day. Uh, that is according to the Department of Labor. So, you know, it's a day to remind folks that people lose their lives at work. People lose their limbs at work. People suffer from diseases that they uh, received from the course of their work. Um, and so I really appreciate the AFL-CIO putting out this report. Um, both ASME and CWA put out statements regarding Workers Memorial Day. Um, CWA wanted to highlight some of their members who have lost their lives over the past year in work-related uh, deaths. Um, and AFSCME also wanted to kind of just remind folks that, um, you know, the Occupational Safety and Health Act was put into to law over half a century ago. Uh, but we continue to deal with too many injuries, too many illnesses, and too many deaths on the job. Uh, and so we need a re-energized OSHA. We need stepped up enforcement. We need uh, more funding to OSHA and MSHA and other safety agencies. Uh, we need to recognize that public service workers are not treated equally and um, are not covered by OSHA standards, right? In 27 states and territories, public serv service workers, including thousands of AFSCME members, are not protected by federal OSHA standards. State, local, and municipal employees are not covered unless there is an OSHA state plan passed by the legislature and signed into law by the governor. We do not have that in Alabama. And in states where the laws do not protect public service workers, the union difference matters even more. So uh, fighting for safety on the job has been one of the historic missions of our labor movement. It has uh, motivated millions of folks to get involved in this movement throughout the last, you know, 100, 150 years. Um, it's a, you know, continuous priority, the safety of our members. And um, just want to echo those comments earlier from Liz Schuler that everyone should be able to return home from work safely. Uh, and the fact that too many don't is a problem we must address as a movement, uh, as a society. We have to put pressure on our government. Uh, and we have to put pressure on these employers. So we'll talk more about it but uh, in future weeks about this report, but I did want to highlight that in honor of Workers Memorial Day coming up tomorrow. Uh, I will be speaking to a class of 11th and 12th graders on Monday, and we'll touch on that as well. Uh, you know, it's just a really important date to, to honor those who have sacrificed so much just because they're going to work. They're just trying to feed their family and take care of themselves and participate in society. Uh, so Workers Memorial Day, Sunday, April 28th, talk to, talk to your friends and neighbors about it. Uh, it's a good opportunity. It's a good conversation starter, right? If you're, if you're looking for a way to have a conversation with folks about workplace issues, about union issues, here's your opening. And that's all I got, Jacob. <clears throat> All right. There you go. Uh, really, you know, <clears throat> that's one of the things that the AFL-CIO does do well. They do they put out some good reports. They put out some uh, they do some good research. So appreciate them and, and going to have to hopefully we'll be able to get one of them on to uh, uh, somebody from the AFL 
on to talk about that report because there's some good stuff there that we can dig into. I did notice that Alabama's numbers got significantly better from the last year. Uh, we were no, we are no longer in the top 10 most deadly states to work in uh, if you're a worker. I think number 21 now. Wow. Yeah, not sure what the uh, uh, what the difference was over the last year, or if if this year or if 2022, you know, because the numbers kind of lag, right? So, uh, 2021, Alabama was in the top 10 most deadly states. Uh, 2022, number 21. So I'm not sure if 21 was an anomaly or if 22 is an anomaly, or if there's some trend that that uh, you know is kind of. Uh, going on in the background right. uh, that that is kind of difficult to to decipher. Um, but, you know, I mean, part of that could be that, you know, in 21, the labor market was, um, you know, we were just starting to feel the effects of a tight labor market. And maybe in 22, with a more mature tight labor market, uh, some of the companies were trying to uh, clean up their act, as it were, um, and, you know, so potentially that could be part of it. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to say because there certainly hasn't been any ramped up enforcement effort right. that we're aware of. There certainly hasn't been any legislation uh, to address worker safety, um, something that we have brought up to legislators before, um, yeah. many of whom know very little about this right. and are unaware that there are, you know, workers all over the state who aren't even covered by OSHA, which, you know, what good is that doing anyway uh, when there's very few inspectors and, and very few uh, routes to enforce OSHA, particularly if you're not in a union, right? So um, it's an issue that really, I think, still resonates deeply with a lot of folks, because if this has happened to you or your father, or your husband, your wife, your daughter, um, you know it and, and you remember it. So it, it's, it's an issue that I think uh, the labor movement has to be really vocal about. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 